I was born in Canada, um, as were my parents. Uh, we all grew up in Western British Columbia. Um, my father is a police officer for the RCMP. It's the Canadian Royal Mounted Police. And, the, and my mom is a nurse. So I studied uh, American Sign Language Interpretation at university. Um, I wanted to become a sign language interpreter for the deaf. My university career was done in Winnipeg. I worked as an interpreter for a little while. Uh, and then before I moved to Turkey, I got my teaching certificate. Um, and now I'm an English teacher. So I grew up in northern BC, uh, a fairly small city, lots of outdoor activities and wilderness. Um, spent a lot of time kind of in nature and going camping and whatnot. But I've been working ever since I was 16. I started just with small jobs in order to get through high school and then university. Um, in university, I was working um, as a, a healthcare assistant, um, as well as working with autistic children. Um, I also was working as a cashier to pay my way through university. Um, once my, uh, I did my university education, I was working um, as an interpreter, a sign language interpreter for the deaf, as well as an intervener for the deaf blind. Before I became a Muslim, I'm going to say I knew very little of Islam, if, if not anything. I, I mean, I remember the first Muslim, the first Muslim that I can remember meeting was actually somebody I worked with when I was in high school and I had no idea she was Muslim. I learned many years later actually after I had converted to Islam. Um, I suppose my only exposure to Islam was anything I had seen uh, on the media, particularly post 9-11 um, and any sort of whatever the media wanted me to hear, right? So that Muslims were responsible for terror attacks or these kinds of ideas. I think um, I had uh, maybe a pre-judgment about that women in Islam were oppressed. Um, I remember specifically when I was looking into Islam, one of the questions I remember asking was, is it true that women can only sit in the back seat of cars, right? So I have no idea where that notion came to me, but um, I mean, somewhere that, that was a prejudgment that I had. Um, so aside, aside from kind of whatever I had ever seen in the media, I had, I had no knowledge. I didn't even know that Muslims were the practitioners of Islam, right? So it was very basic. Uh, I had a conversation with a Muslim and I remember being so shocked because the images that I had seen on the media were so different from this individual. And, uh, and then later on we had a discussion as well about the fact that the prophets between Islam and Christianity um, were similar, which was news to me. And I remember thinking, wow, I really, I should learn something about this religion. Like what if I'm ever in an opportunity or if I ever have to interpret at a mosque or uh, I, I should get some background knowledge. So I just decided to read into Islam to expand my knowledge in case I ever was going to interpret in that situation. And in the meantime, I was still having conversations about, with the individual that I had met about Islam. And so as I was reading and seeing that there were so many similarities between Christianity, which was the religion I was practicing before, um, and Islam, I just became more and more shocked at how many similar ideas there were. Um, so from there, I, I continued to do some research. And as I, the more research that I did, the more I understood that um, I, there were things about Islam that I really appreciated and then uh, there were things about Christianity that I started to question um, and eventually I, I, was, um, I was working at university at that time, I was working at a, a country club and there was a Muslim family, a Syrian Muslim family at the time. They had just joined and, and I understood they were Muslim and I said, oh, I, I see that you're Muslim and I'm learning about Islam a little bit, I'm reading uh, about Islam and, and the man, he was really keen to, to you know, talk or to bring bring me books or help in any way that he could, and and eventually they invited me to the mosque with them and to their home, and um, and so I went because I was I, I was learning about Islam and I was you know eager to go and see the community, and and then when I went to the mosque, I ended up meeting some really wonderful women, like young women that were my age, um, who I became quite close friends with. And slowly, slowly, without even my knowing it, I, um, the search that was just initially just to kind of become a better human being and to gain knowledge, um, I, I started to ask myself some serious questions about, like, is this something that I really believed? And, 
and um, yeah, what were the questions that, and, that I was struggling with within Christianity and, and these are things that I needed to contemplate more. And I remember one evening, um, as a few months into reading about Islam, as things were starting to get more serious for me and I was realizing that, um, that this was a religion that I really wanted to consider, um, I remember praying at night and just asking Allah and I just saying, you know, Allah, whoever you are, or God, whoever you are, if you're God of Christianity or if you're God of Islam, show that to me and, and kind of give me a sign, but make it clear to me, right, which, which is truth. And, and after I made that supplication and I prayed that prayer that night, it was, um, it, everything just became so much clearer. I really met amazing Muslim people in my life. Um, the questions that I was struggling with, uh, just about the faith or about modesty, like covering or um, monotheism or the history of the Quran, like all these kinds of things. Uh, just all, God just keep putting people in my life to answer those questions. So I was really concerned about the fact that um, I was looking into Islam, but people didn't know that I hadn't told my friends, I hadn't told my family. And what was that going to mean if I did accept Islam and how would they receive me? And so I had made that prayer about, you know, God, who are you? God of Christianity, God of Islam. And I, um, I made an appointment uh, with the, the chaplain, the, the pastor of the Christian community on our university campus. And I had asked him, I, I sat down with him and I said, look, I, I'm at the point where I'm questioning my faith and I have some questions and if you can't give me an answer, I, I believe I'm going to become Muslim. And a lot of the questions uh, particularly were with um, the Bible actually and how the Bible was selected and how the books of the Bible were selected and the can like the canacity of the Bible and, and, um, in the, and why wasn't the original Bible in existence and um, why was there such discrepancy between the different versions of the Bible? And um, whereas the Quran um, has been preserved for 1,400 years, and and that was something that was really significant for me because, I mean, God, even in Christianity, God says he, like He will protect His word, and there was the Quran that was the message of God that even if it was physically destroyed. Um, it would be protected because so many people have memorized it and the original is still in existence and and then here was the bible that there was no original and within the versions there were so many you know interpretations and um and so i sat down with this pastor and i i asked these questions and he couldn't he couldn't give me any answer and and he said you know in the end you just have to believe and that's what faith is and you just have to believe and um and that that was a struggle for me that didn't feel right because i felt surely um, surely religion and belief it's more than just like a hunch or it's more than a feeling or it's more than an idea like I I wanted something that felt more concrete and the same weekend at my university there was a conference that had been put on by the local Muslim Student Association and they brought in a speaker from England um, and I just remember walking in that weekend and all of the youth were there all of you know all of these students and everybody wanted to meet him he was quite popular at the time and um, and everybody wanted to talk to him and spend time with him and I walked up to him and he he just sat and answered all of my questions and uh, I just remember thinking wow like uh, I went to this pastor and I had these questions and he he couldn't give me his answers he couldn't be clear to me and then this man who everybody wants to speak with um, he dedicated hours, literally hours of his time to just sit there and to answer my questions. And the other really unique part of it, because I asked him the same questions, I asked the pastor, I asked him um, questions about the Bible. And, and this, this, uh, this brother from, uh, from England, he gave me the, the history not from the Muslim perspective, he actually, he was a comparative religious scholar and, and he gave me the perspective from the religious, the Christian church, from the Christian history books and he said, look, this is the history, if you want to go read about it, um, you can just go to like a Christian, you know, a Christian textbook that you'd find at a Christian university and, and I so appreciated that perspective because I didn't want his bias, I wanted truth, I wanted something concrete, which is what I had gone to the pastor for and, 
And in that moment, I felt like so much relief that I was like, there it is, there's the facts. But at the same time, um, I was, I questioned, why had I never learned this when I went to, the, uh, to church or Sunday school? Because I was very active in the Christian church growing up. And um, anyway, so at the end of the evening, he asked me, he said, you know, do you believe in Allah? And I said, yeah, like I've always believed in God. That's no problem. The concept of God is, has never been an issue. And then he said, do you believe that the Prophet Muhammad is his, like, the final prophet um, and messenger. And I said, yeah, I think that makes sense. And then, he, so he said to me, he said, like, go, um, you know, go wash, take your ablutions and come back and let's, like, give your shahada, your testimony of faith. And I was just like, whoa, no, this, like, this is not happening right now. I can't do this right now. Because again, I was at that point where, like, I knew it was truth, but I was so scared to take the step. And, and it was funny because I had prayed and I had asked God, I was like, who are you and show me truth. And there it was. But in that moment, it was just like, I needed to take the step, you know, like God did his part. It was time for me to do mine. But um, again, I knew what that meant for me. I knew that that meant the following day I would put on hijab or, um, which not everybody does, but for me, it was a really important step. I knew like if I was going to make this deci decision, I was going to live as a Muslim. And that was going to mean no more drinking alcohol and you know, no party, no pork, no, you know, like putting a hijab on. And so I told him, no, like, I'm not, I'm not going to become Muslim tonight. And uh, we, we, we continued the discussion. And at the end of it, I said, look, this conference is two days long. If at the end of the weekend, I feel like I do today, like I will become Muslim. I'll, I'll make that decision, which is what I did. So that was a Friday night. And then on the Sunday, May 14th, I, uh, I gave my testimony of faith in front of everybody at this conference and became Muslim. It was extremely scary because, um, because Islam was not well received in the media at the time. And I knew that if I told them, I was probably going to lose them. And the, those two friends that I sat with that night, they were incredibly supportive and they're still two of my best friends today. Um, there's lots of other people that didn't, uh, didn't support me. And eventually after I became Muslim, I took some time and I sent out uh, an email to everybody. A lot of my, my older friends and high school friends, they were, they were in a different city. I went to university in a different city. So I told people over email, um, and I told my family a couple, a week or so after I had become Muslim, and they were living in a different city. And of course it was difficult because uh, they, they didn't know what to expect. It was really scary for them, right? They, um, they didn't know what I was gonna look like or what did that mean? And they didn't see the process. They hadn't seen me looking into things. They, um, they didn't know the Muslim community. Again, their experience of Islam was what they had seen in the media. My dad was a police officer. Uh, it was really difficult for them, it was really hard. My mom was very fearful that um, there's this movie, Not Without My Daughter. She was really fearful I was going to fall <laughs> into, like I was going to be kidnapped or um, that if I got married, you know, that my children were going to be taken away from me. I would never leave the house. Like all of these bizarre Hollywood kind of uh, perceptions of Islam that are put on them, that, that was their experience, right? And so they, they really struggled. My dad was for different reasons, my mom for different reasons. Um, eventually, over time, uh, they've certainly come around and we've, we're still very close, but there's, there were some major struggles early on. Um, I definitely lost some friends. Some of my friends decided to put distance for myself um, because my lifestyle was different now in terms of just my, my leisure activities and things I did, places I went, some of that distance I put. Um, Eventually, what I learned is that the people that were most important to me and the truest of friends, it, it didn't matter. They were going to be there no matter what, which has been my experience. The, my truest friends are still my friends today. Um, and then the other people that um, were really negative um, and had kind of those really aggressive, kind of abrasive responses, they aren't people that I, I need in my life right now anyway. You know, those aren't, uh, if you're not going to love me in my as I am no matter what, then you don't need to be a part of my life. Um, people I didn't know but I, in the community that I lived in at the time, um, I remember feeling 
like everybody was looking at me. Like I remember feeling, oh, you know, people were staring, but that was probably just my own insecurity at the time. Although I certainly did experience some discrimination within the community. But overall, my experience has been quite positive. Um, certainly the Muslim community opened their arms to me and were incredibly supportive. And I felt so much love and such a sense of community and respect there, uh, which was extremely helpful early on. Um, having that community connection, I think, was, was major. It was, it was very key in terms of my, my feeling so strong and willing to continue when things were difficult. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's been okay. Yeah, I mean, I think I was so ignorant towards Islam before I became Muslim. I, as I said, I really didn't know, um, I really didn't know anything. And I think afterwards, um, it wasn't that my mind necessarily changed. I think I was just, I was so much more educated and I had, I had such a, uh, I mean, such a positive experience and uh, I think Seeing the diversity in the community as well was really significant. I think there's always this idea that Muslims are just Arabs, which is absolutely not the case. It was such a, um, a welcomed opportunity to be a part of such a diverse community, people from all over the world, people with such diverse backgrounds. Um, so that was pretty significant. Um, other, I mean, opposed from that, I don't think I had a lot of other predisposed ideas or notions about it. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the most significant things for me when I became Muslim or just uh, what I love the most about Islam right now is, uh, as I mentioned, I think that, I just think it's such a, it balances the faith and the, the spiritual and the, uh, the intellectual. Uh, it's, it's a perfect balance. There's proof in it and the fact that the Quran has been preserved and, you know, that really what we're asked for um, and asked of to do, it just makes such perfect sense to me. I just, um, I think that um, that it it's timeless. I think that the examples that we find in the Quran and from the Prophet Muhammad, like I think, peace be upon him, uh, I think they're examples for everybody in all situations. Um, and I think that that is what makes it a, like a religion for all and inclusive of everybody. I also love um, the idea of community that's within Islam. Um, there's five pillars within Islam, um, and I, each of the pillars, you know, the statement of faith, we say that publicly around community. We pray as a community facing the same direction at the same time, uh, often, often in congregation with one another. We all fast the same month of Ramadan. Again, it's a community action. We give charity as the cat. Um, we have to do that to support our community, to take care of the people in need. Um, and then if we go to Hajj, again, this is Muslims all going to the same place, doing the same pilgrimage together. Community is such an integral part of this religion. And we're all in the same playing field. Um, that was, that's enormous to me in terms of uh, there's no racism. Uh, there's no um, tribalism. There's no, there's no sense of somebody being better because of money or education or status, we're, we're all the same. And I think that when that's understood, and um, it, it's just something so beautiful. And it really just shows how this is a religion for everybody and, and how we need to connect with one another and we need to serve one another and, and worship with one another, which I think is, is really what we need to do as humanity um, for, the sake of, for the sake of the preservation of the earth and pres preservation of mankind. And, um, just be good and, and take care of one another and I think that Islam really encompasses that um, and that's that's like the beauty and the truth of Islam that I wish was uh, which was I wish I was on the media more I wish that was the message that was being shared all the time instead of the negativity I think the biggest struggle that Muslims are facing and that Islam is facing right now um, clearly is that so much of what is being shown about Islam, it's not our narrative. I think that the world is really quick to, to talk about Islam um, and often it's not the Muslims that are being interviewed or that are speaking up. And I think that we as a Muslim community, we need to be more active. Um, but I also think that the media has a responsibility to talk to Muslims as well and to tell the good stories and to uh, to go into the communities and see the work that's going on. 
I also think that because there's so much negativity when it comes to Islam, um, that, and we live in such a global uh, environment these days, I think it poses a new struggle, particularly for Muslims in general, but particularly our youth, in terms of um, internalized Islamophobia and uh, Muslim identity. Um, how can I be Muslim um, as well as, you know, live a, live a life in today's society? Um, what does that look like? How, uh, how can I still have pride in my religion and still practice my religion uh, without being uh, or having fear of judgment or assuming that people will think a certain thing of me or um, opp will oppress me or close doors towards me or have judgments upon me. I think that's a, that's a struggle right now for our community. I think we really need to work hard to find our voices and to go back and to look at the struggles from the people of our past. Um, as I said, the Quran is timeless and I think that there's true um, there's true knowledge and, and wisdom to be taken from those stories and to apply to today's society and if we can do that and we can find our voices and if we can just um, and not hide from who we are it's okay that we're Muslim right uh, so just tell our own stories I think that will um, I think that's that's really important for our community right now I mean I've been Muslim in the West and I've been Muslim here in Turkey uh, there's definitely different experiences and different struggles. I mean, certainly within Canada. Canada is a pretty welcoming uh, country. It's pretty diverse. We lived in Toronto. It's an extremely diverse city. Um, the mosques are very, very active. Uh, there's a lot of learning to be had, lots of conferences. Um, the mosques are the center of the community. Uh, people are going there for, for activities and sports and community engagement and, and because it's necessary to keep your Muslim identity. The, the mosque is the hub of the Muslim identity. They're, they're really precious things and, and uh, it feels very much alive. And you really understand your community and um, how important that is. Uh, when we came here, uh, because everybody's grown up Muslim and Muslim is part of the culture, or Islam is part of the, the culture, uh, Islam is experienced and it's lived, but in a very different way. And um, I know for myself and also with my children, I feel like I have to work really hard to make sure that there's a consciousness about Islam here and that we don't take it for granted. Um, the, there isn't the activity in the, in the mosques like there is in Canada um, in order to, for myself particularly because I speak English predominantly, to seek knowledge and to be in community with others, that, that's a bigger challenge. Women here, they don't have as much of a presence in the mosques um, or in just uh, even children. I'm struggling to have my children really excited about it. I, so it takes, I, I feel like it takes more of an effort um, to raise them in a way where they're, they're conscious of the choices that we make, conscious of the way that we live, uh, knowing why we do it. Um, I would say that those are the two the major differences. There's positive and negatives of both. Um, the fact that we're here, that, I mean, that was a choice. We wanted to raise our children in a, in a Muslim country and we value that very much. That being said, I really do hope that one day my children will experience um, an excitement and a love for the mosque that they did when we were in Canada. I think the best way to tell others about Islam is to make sure you, <laughs> you know the religion yourself. I mean, I think that we are responsible as Muslims to, to educate ourselves and to pra practice um, and adhere to the commandments of the Quran and of Allah. Um, and I think that if we do that, that's the best example. Um, I think, you know, we know the Prophet Muhammad was the best example for mankind. And the way that we know he won the hearts of the people is because he was trusted, he was kind. He was generous, um, he was forgiving, he was merciful. And at the same time, he adhered to his values. He didn't, he didn't change them for others. He, and he was always, uh, he was always on the, the middle ground, you know, whatever was easy for the people. And I think that if we understand our religion and if we practice it um, unapologetically in terms of, again, I, this is my faith, and I'm going to adhere to it. At the same time, I can still be a part of your community and I can still love you and I can still um, welcome you and, 
and support, we can support one another and we can have respectful dialogue. And, um, and I think that as long as we do that and we follow his example, I think that's going to be the best example for, for others as well. Because they'll, it's undeniable. It's, they'll, they'll see the truth. They'll see the beauty. Um, because that's what true Islam is. It's, it's this sense of community and respect and kindness and charity um, and welcoming dialogue and, um, and bettering ourselves. And I think that that's what we need to really focus on. Thank you.